I've made a lot of videos on procedural materials, so I kind of know what I'm talking about on this one. I feel like I just have this strange fascination with them, um, and it's what I know best in Blender, I would say. So, this is the easiest way I could figure out how to make moss in Blender. Um, you can always, like, texture paint it and stuff like that, but I honestly find that kind of boring, so I just do it in the shader editor. This material can look pretty photorealistic, but I would say if you want it to look as real as possible, this probably isn't for you. But if you want to learn the basics of the Blender Shader Editor and maybe learn how to make a cool material doing it, um, this is definitely the video for you. Today I'm just going to be showcasing the Musgrave texture and how it kind of is perfect for this kind of thing. So let's just go ahead and get right into it. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and add an Icosphere, just because I think that is the best object to test out a material. Um, feel free to add this to whatever object you want to but I'm going to be using an Nicosphere for demonstration. So this shader is fairly simple if you break it down into parts. Um, just go ahead and create a new material. And it's also very easy to um, add moss onto an existing material as well. So I'll show you how to modify it to fit an existing material at the end. So right now it's just going to be one principal VSDF, and we're just going to go ahead and add a noise texture. So it's not too important what size this is so far, but I'm going to set it to something about 15. And we're going to go ahead and add a Musgrave as well. And the settings I had for this was 250 for this. And um, you can turn up the detail if you want. The dimension and lacinarity, I think that's how you say it, should both be 0.1. And now if you go ahead and view this by hitting Control shift click if you have the Node Wrangler add-on applied, this should work. Um, you can just kind of see this kind of setup. So this already looks like moss growth. What you're going to want to do is you're going to add a mix shader. And by mix shader, I meant mix RGB. And just go ahead and plug these two in. I recommend turning the factor down a little bit. So this is going to go into the base color for now. And you're going to want to add a color ramp. So my non-moss area is just going to be white. And my mossy area is going to be, of course, green. If you're actually going to make this realistic, you would add a picture of moss and pick colors from that. But in this case, I'm kind of lazy, so I'm just going to find a color that I think looks like a moss color. So I'm move this in a little bit to see that nice moss growth there. And move that in as well. And feel free to turn the scale down or up. Whatever scale looks good for the object that you have. And you can go ahead and add other colors as well, um, just to make the moss look a little bit better. So I think those two colors are what I'm going to be using for now. So I'm going to duplicate this color ramp because I need it for other parts of the material. So in this one, I don't need this right there. Um, I just need it to look like this, and I just desaturate this and turn this down. I'm sorry, turn that up and then turn this one down. And I'm going to be using this as a roughness map. Just so I can tell the difference between the moss and the white material, I'm going to make sure the white material is quite shiny. So now the white material is shiny and the moss is rough, as moss should be. But um, it's kind of missing something, and that is bump and bump is going to make this moss actually look real. So go ahead and add a bump node. And we're gonna add this down here. Don't worry about the strength, we're gonna be using um, a duplicate of this one for that. Um, that way you can set your roughness to whatever you want and have that independent of the strength. But if you don't care about that, you can obviously use this same one. So we're gonna plug this into the strength of the bump. And um, for the height, um, you have a few options. You can use this noise texture if you want. You can see already these kind of bumps here, but yeah, it's not looking so great in the spots where it is because of the high strength. That's one of the downsides to having this noise texture dictate that is you can't really alter the scale too much without it ruining that. So that's why I want to add another noise texture and just use that one instead. This one can have a much higher scale now, something about that. Turn up the detail a little bit and the roughness maybe, but already that's looking a lot better. So what I'm also going to do is I'm going to add another Musgrave texture. And we're going to use this um, in a pretty interesting way. So go ahead and duplicate this uh, bump node and plug this into the normal of that bump node. Now I'm not exactly sure how this works, but it kind of layers them together and it achieves this really cool effect. So it kind of adds this on top of the other one. So you can see it kind of ruins this part, so got to use this again for the strength. So now you can see it only appears on these spots. So I can go ahead and scale this up as much as I want, turn up the detail maybe, turn down the dimension. I think that achieves a very convincing effect. 
All right, so that is the basics of the moss texture. Um, you can see it is it is pretty basic, but I believe if you pick the right colors and you mess around with this musgrave and um, this noise enough, you can get some really realistic looking results. So now I want to show you guys how to modify this to fit two materials. Um, and for this, you don't need a roughness input. And you're going to want to plug. You also don't need this either. This material right here is going to be your base. So let's just make this one blue. Um, and you actually don't need to plug this in for now. Just leave this note set up here. Don't delete anything yet. Except for that roughness thing, of course. So I'm going to turn up the roughness on this. And yeah, this is just going to signify our one material that isn't mossy. And I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. Um, have this bright green signify our mossy material. So you can see here we have this very basic setup. All we have to do is plug this into there. And we don't need to worry about the strength because it's going to be the same strength all the way through. And we're not going to want it to be one. Maybe something lower like that. Okay, and of course the base color is what it is, but this right here is not going to affect the base color. It's instead going to affect a mix shader. So go ahead and plug this into the factor of the mix shader. Okay, and then plug this into one of the sockets and this into another and view that. So you notice that I actually deleted a color ramp that I needed. <laughs> if I can go back and not delete that, that'd be great. That's embarrassing. I'm just gonna go ahead and add a color ramp and do this over again. If I can see it load, move that up and move this down. Obviously this bright green is not a very good color for moss and um, this blue color would probably be wood or something. And that just allows you to have completely freedom with this second material to do whatever you want. And that's why this setup I think is probably better. But um, I would say the first setup is more interesting because there's a little more going on and it's just one material or one principal BSDF. So yeah, that is the basics of making a procedural material. Um, I think moss is a really good example of showcasing the musgrave texture. I think that works really well. That's kind of what got me started on this idea. So yeah, thank you for watching. Go ahead and check out my other tutorials that are similar to this. If you did enjoy, maybe consider subscribing and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.